a lot of people, including myself, fall into the trap of thinking, well, if I can afford it, anyone can, right? This is especially noticeable in technology content. See every Linus Tech Tips video where he refers to an RTX 2080 Super as a prop. RTX 20, what is this, 2080 Super? Yep. Yeah, it's so basically just a prop now, you know? It still looks pretty. Meanwhile, almost everyone, well, the vast majority of Steam users are still on 1050 Ti's and 1060's, you know? That's why I enjoy content like Low Spec Gamer and similar channels, where they work their magic to make things work and on the lowest possible hardware requirements for the minimum possible investment. In a similar vein, I own a load of expensive flashlights and tools. No way to get around that. This was 150, this was like 120, and you don't want to know how much this one was. Just like I did with a gaming PC in my first serious video on this channel, which is actually still down there, the PC I built, I'm going to be putting together an everyday carry kit which won't max out your credit card and that I would also personally use and carry, well, every day. So I'm going on the assumption that you guys already know basically what an everyday carry kit is. It's the purpose is to prepare you for whatever you might face day to day. Everything from tape on a cardboard box to an emergency situation. In my mind, an everyday carry kit should include a tool, a light source, and a pen. The budget I'm setting for this kit is around 30 pounds, 30 pounds, $30. <laughs> Not for any real reason, just that it's more than 15 and less than 50. <laughs> I feel like it's a sensible investment for almost anyone, and we should be able to get tools that are high quality and will last. Unfortunately, this budget kind of limits us in certain departments. Specifically, I always wear a watch. <laughs> Basically, any decent watch will completely blow our $30 budget way out of the water. My main kick in this kind of budget department is this, which is a Timex Expedition. I love the Indiglo, which you can't see because it's light in here. <laughs> the Indiglo is great, the digital, uh, the digital readout is great, and the face is very large, uh, bright, and easy to read. And also, I find myself using this as a timer more often than I thought. I guess consider this kind of watch a bit of a runner-up, since it on its own is about $40. The most frequent thing I reach for always is one of my trusty flashlights. And this through night TI, <laughs> TI3 V2 has served me extremely well in the last three months since I actually bought it. Uh, it's not actually in the box because this is my one of the two flashlights that I carry with me at all times, no matter what. Uh, it fits inside my uh, tiny jeans pocket watch pocket. Um, the 120 lumen brightness doesn't sound like a lot, but it is more than enough in uh, a lot of situations. Uh, and I even, <laughs> funnily enough, used it in Big Bear while taking photos of the stars on my phone. The UI is extremely simple. In fact, by simply disassembling it, you'll be able to see how exactly how it works. It's a single AAA. This is, this, uh, the life you get out of a single AAA is extremely impressive. And I like these Amazon Basics ones because they are very cheap. Screw it back in. And uh, one connection between the top and the bottom for low, then medium, then high. And that's it. And if you do it a bunch of times, you get uh, uh, strobe, which I never use because I don't like strobe. And you can see from the wear and tear on the uh, clip, that it is, that it has been sitting in my pocket for three months. Uh, but other than that, it looks to be a perfectly brand new. And that is a very good sign because I am rough on my flashlight. So I should show you a photo of my other one, which I've had for about four years and it's beaten up. The best flashlight is the one you have on you. And I always have this one on me. And the best part is they are very, very frequently available on the Throughnight website for just $5.95, aka the cost of shipping. And it is actually real shipping, it's not coming from China. Uh, mine arrived in like three days. 
Well, that's the light section, and if you know me, that was, well, pretty predictable. <laughs> but here's something a little bit out of left field. Specifically for me, because carrying a pen isn't something I am known for. <laughs> However, a couple of recent happenings at work have made me reconsider, and I will be trying to keep this one on me at all times, or as much as I can. This is the legendary Zebra F701, which is very well known in the uh, pen community as being extremely good value, because you can buy one of these on Amazon for about $5, <laughs> which is very little compared to some of the pens that I looked at while I was researching for this. Let me grab my uh, knife to get this thing open, and we'll see. Because this, as you can see, because it was sealed in its package, is the first time I'm actually looking at this. Um, and the reason I picked, let's get this away, the reason I picked uh, this pen specifically is because um, the entirely metal design is known for its legendary reliability. In fact, how do you unscrew this? Hmm. <laughs> um, as you can see on the package, knurled grip, the, even the refill inside is metal, which is very, very nice. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It is <laughs> sure as a pen. Uh, what around here can I even draw on? Uh, oh, here we go. This is the uh, this is the manual for the uh, FW Lumintop FW21 Pro, my brightest flashlight, which that video is doing surprisingly well. <laughs> so I guess as the first thing, let's, I don't know, highlight muggle mode. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Very, very thin, uh, very, very thin point, and immediately it's nice. The no grip where your fingers go is just perfect. It's not sharp, it's, you know, soft. <laughs> whoa, whoa, that's the opposite of sharp. Uh, but extremely grippy. You could probably pick it up just with the friction of your fingers. Um, and it's shockingly light. It's, I think it said it was about seven grams, which is very, very little <laughs> for, a, for a piece of steel, considering this is mostly steel and it weighs about, I don't know, uh, 20 times as much or something. Honestly, it could be a, a pretty decent fidget toy, honestly. Oh, there we go. I just needed more grip on my fingers. Uh, and there we go. That is, sure is an all-metal refill. And I believe in earlier uh, revisions of this, there was a plastic. The clicking mechanism was actually made of plastic, and people don't like that on a pen that promotes itself as being all metal, but luckily they revised it, and this is all now entirely metal, and it is extremely nice. The last purchase in my kit of three multi-tools is a bit of a curveball, a bit of an option select, because I'm giving you two options for the tool section. Both are about $20, and both are useful for different reasons. The first tool option is again something I carry on me every day. You could call it my personal choice. And it's something I've put a lot of wear and tear on since I bought it in 2017. This is a Gerber Dime, a traditional butterfly style multi-tool. Essentially a baby one of these. Much larger, larger leather man. It's, it's served me extremely well. And I've only, I've oiled it a couple of times, but really nothing severe. You know, I haven't had it serviced or anything. And it's only about 20 bucks, so a, a good, a good multi-tool service might actually be more expensive than simply buying another one. Obviously, we've got the knife blade, uh, flathead, screwdriver, and very heavy air quotes, Phillips head screwdriver here, which is little more than a uh, uh, flat tip diamond on there to try and try and engage with Phillips head, uh, Phillips head screws. And then we flip it over for a pair of tiny scissors, which are more useful than you might think. Uh, and this is called a package opening blade, so you're not supposed to gunk up the blade on the main knife. As you can see, it's extremely blunt. <laughs> but
but I found this to be not particularly useful. I just use the main blade always. Um, and this is something that I actually didn't know about until doing research for this video. There's a pair of tiny, tiny tweezers in here, just like an old Victorinox uh, uh, multi-tool or knife. So you've got a tiny piece of, a tiny stamped and stamped metal tweezers there, tucked in there. And then of course, let's put all this back. Yeah. And then of course, obviously, oh, there's a bottle cap, uh, a bottle opener there. But I use that to actually put it on a uh, on a carabiner. And then of course, spring-loaded pliers with the world's smallest wire cutters there, which are more useful for uh, cable ties than actual cables. The fact you don't have to open it to actually access any of the like main tools is very very handy, especially the knife, because 99% of the time you're going to be using this. <laughs> Like, how many boxes do you open today? I work in I work in uh, IT, so I am opening boxes constantly, and this really serves me well. And I actually had an older, my small tool before this was a Leatherman Micro, a Micra, and you had to flip open the whole thing uh, to access any of the tools. And I always thought that was a UI disaster, and this is much much more uh, useful now. Of course, this is not going to compete in quality with something like the full-size Leatherman. Like, this is $150 and this one is $20. <laughs> There's no way. This is stamped metal, made in China, uh, and sold in fries. You know what I mean? Whereas this is an actual specialist tool, which is uh, steel on the inside with a titanium casing. Like, there's no way it's going to compete in quality. But... I've used this a heck of a lot more than I've used this simply because I put it on a carabiner on my belt always. And I've always got it, and so I use it all the time. It's just like this. I've used this a hundred times more than I've used this <laughs> simply because I always have it with me. And if that isn't the absolute essence of an everyday carry, then I don't know what is. Unfortunately, I don't have the box for this because I threw it out three years ago. But I'll leave it there on its lonesome. Another bonus is that it comes in pink. And finally, the other approximately $20 tool that I'm going to be showing you is this. CRKT, or is that Cricut? I guess it's CRKT, Squid. <laughs> Which is, well, let's use this. Which is confidence in hand. I like the uh, ley lines uh, on the on the box. A lovely folding knife. Now this is obviously the first time I'm actually looking at this. Uh, let's see what it actually comes with here. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, uh, CR, CRKT is a uh, company based in Connecticut. I believe it's actually the Connecticut uh, uh, knife company or something. Um, and this is one of their, I think, best looking models. It's finished in this absolutely gorgeous stonewashed black, which I believe they said on the video in the Amazon page, they manufacture the components and then put it, literally put it in a rock tumbler. <laughs> Which is fun. Um, the blade, let's just see, see if I can even... Oh, that's a nice movement. The blade is just over two inches long, which means it is under. It's not super sharp, uh, but it is sharp. That would cut you. Um, which means that it is under the three inch limit of certain places in the world, uh, United States and, and the UK, where three inch blades are the maximum you're allowed to carry. I really... Just opening that, this stud, that's a really nice opening movement. And I really like this stud to actually open the thing. It locks in place. It's, uh, it looks like it locks with this tab coming in on the side. Um, on the side of the frame. And I like the uh, deep pocket. I think they call this a deep carry kit. Uh, a deep carry uh, a thing. Let's see, what can I cut that's, uh, that I don't care about? Uh, why not? <laughs> why don't we cut the uh, FW21 manual that we were drawing on earlier? Just because I've seen it a hundred times, because all the manuals are the same. 
I don't know, this is the first time I'm using this knife, so... Yeah, I mean, that cut beautifully. Um, I'm actually going to be taking all of these on a camping trip, so I'll, I'll put uh, B-roll of, of actually using this in a, in a camping situation um, uh, over, over the top of this. But I really like, it's, it's extremely small. I mean, just to put this in comparison, this is, this is a very small multi-tool and it's only a little bit longer than that. It's actually so small compared to the, to the Leatherman, which is very easy to open the blade with one finger. You can do it here. I mean, I could probably, that's going to work itself out. The movement is nice and then it locks into place. Very, very comfortable in the hand. This uh, gap for your first finger is perfect. That's really nice. I mean, obviously, the blade is not going to be, um, ideally, the blade on your multi-tool or on your everyday carry isn't going to be the sharpest thing in the world because if you're opening a box, <laughs> That's a total waste of that blade. You're not gonna you're not gonna open the box any better than than if you than if your blade was was a little bit dull. The less time your hands are around extremely sharp knives, the better, I think. Um, I actually I actually had one of my knives sharpened very recently, um, this one here, and it's so unbelievably sharp that I'm a little bit worried to use it in a in a normal situation. Um, this will cut through paper with its own weight, so that's that's a little much. Um, the squid is kind of the perfect balance, and it's it's extremely light. I think this said, uh, yeah, uh, I have the spec sheet. It's about yeah, it's about ninety six grams, and that's actually something I haven't mentioned much. Um, the like, yeah, the Leatherman is cool. It's it's, it's steel and it's it's made of half of it's made of lightweight titanium, uh, but despite that, it weighs like 250 grams, um, and if you only use this blade nine out of ten times, you pull the tool out of your pocket, then why save? Why not save all of that weight and go with this, which weighs about 90 90 or so grams, and save all that weight in your in your jeans pocket. And that point goes for all of these tools. I mean, similar to this. I mean, this weighs almost nothing. It, the outside bit's aluminium. Like, it's it's tiny. Um, and the flashlight, again, like, the giant mega tools that I have, the, the giant mega flashlights, including this one, the Ace Beam H30, which is another one I highly recommend. This weighs a ton compared to this. I mean, this is a AAA battery, for goodness sake. It's tiny. Oh, it, that's just a rule of life. In uh, the lighter, the better. Uh, <laughs> although the pen, this is like, yeah, I have my notes here. This is about nine grams, and considering normal plastic Bic pens are about seven grams, <laughs> if you can find something that's lighter than this, that uh, that you'd be able to tell the difference, because I certainly can't tell the difference between seven grams and nine grams, then you're more sensitive than me. Yeah. Kind of. We do the triangle, the classic triangle nose. Yeah. And do this slightly gently. <laughs> slightly gently grabs the blade with your bare hand. It's a very small knife. Don't worry. It's the legal size in California. <laughs> yeah, it's under the legal size. Yeah. Might have to make the nose a little bigger, just because the stuff's not that small, or well, the blade is very wide. Yeah. Ugh. Now he's got a sniff snooter. Ah! Oh no! Ah! Oh no! Did it not go all the way through on one part? It must have not have. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> He's got nose hairs. Hmm, you're right. Just push it in. 
With your thumbs, not with your blade. <laughs> okay. Oh. <gasps> Wait, how'd, you, <laughs> how'd that happen? I'm not sure. Well, that proves how sharp the knife is. Well, as you just saw, I just carved a pumpkin with my CRKT squid. And I have to say, it's a heck of a knife for 20 bucks. Uh, as the night concludes, and as the full moon rises, it is a blue moon, it is Halloween tonight, I think I'm going to end this video. Something spooky out in the, <laughs> out on the lake. Oh my goodness. Is that a bat? I have to look at that in uh, post production. Uh... All of these tools are great. Uh, they're all highly recommended. And I guess I will see you next time. You know the drill. Like, subscribe if you like the content. Message me on Twitter or on the comments. I try and read every comment if you want to talk to me. And I always want to talk because I'm lonely and I'll see you next time.